Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Teal Talks. My name is Chris. I use she, her pronouns. And my name is Holly. I also use she, her pronouns. So this month is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we wanted our weekly video to kind of revolve around this month of May. I know that last week's video was not targeted towards Mental Health Awareness Month, but we wanted to make sure that we had a video dedicated to this month because it's a really important month to talk about. So to begin our introduction to Mental Health Awareness Month, we wanted to first talk about what Mental Health Awareness Month was. So <laughs> broadly, I will define Mental Health Awareness Month with the title of it <laughs> itself by just saying that the, the purpose of Mental Health Awareness Month bluntly is to essentially spread awareness around mental health and sometimes mental illness. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that there are kind of different purposes when we look at awareness months. And so within Mental Health Awareness Month, we have maybe like five to six kind of areas that we're targeting. We want to raise awareness of mental health. We want to fight the stigma that exists within mental health. We want to provide support, educate everyone around mental health and kind of that um, stigma and what mental health is just in general and to advocate for individuals who experience mental health um, challenges, as well as advocate for just the awareness of and the understanding around mental health overall. So that's kind of the goal of Mental Health Awareness Month overall. So Holly talked a little bit about the stigmas that exist around mental health and sometimes mental illness as well. And really, we could probably spend a whole video going into what those stigmas are and breaking them down a little bit more. But just for purposes of time, um, we're going to stick to a very general uh, definition, maybe, of what that means or what that encompasses. But there are a lot of stigmas around mental health that are really just shame that society has attached to mental illness and people who experience challenges related to mental illness. Um, it can be obviously super harmful. There's a lot of misconceptions and myths around mental illness and mental health. So really like Holly talked about, just raising that awareness, educating people, breaking down stigmas like that that might cause harm to people living with mental illness and um, struggling with their mental health. So. This month, well, this month, this episode, this this episode of our weekly series, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about self-care in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, which very literally, again, to define the word with the word, which is just what Holly and I seem to be doing with this, um, <laughs> self-care is literally how we take care of ourselves, but it includes mentally, physically, and emotionally, uh, all of those worlds, all of those realms of self-care. So. Holly's going to talk a little bit more about some self-care basics, and then we're going to give some examples that you can hopefully try at home if you maybe haven't been practicing great self-care lately, or maybe there's some examples that you would want to utilize that you really haven't thought of before. Yes, so when we talk about self-care, we have to talk about the start, the beginning, and the foundation of self-care, and when I talk about that, I mean, what is the basic kind of meaning of self-care, and there are many areas that you make sure and have to and should be targeting when you think about self-care. And those areas are your kind of just regular areas that you are taking care of yourself every day. Again, I think I just did that thing that we've done five times, but I'll explain myself. So when we're talking about the basics of health, self-care, healthcare, self-care, I mean- Self-care um, is self-care, so. It is self-care, right? <laughs> So that is a basic, actually, <laughs> basic necessity, but um, we mean hygiene, exercise, getting self <laughs> fresh air, getting sleep, and eating well. So making sure that you are taking care of yourself, that you're eating well, that you are getting outside, that you are um, showering regularly, that you're getting as much sleep as you can and that your body needs. Those are the super basic things that really are important and that go a really, really long way when we're talking about coping and taking care of yourself. And when we think about just mental health overall, if we're taking care of ourselves, then we're feeling good too. And <laughs> as, I go, as I go from there, <laughs> I forgot that I'm continuing. So um, you think I, now we would like have this down and not be so nervous <laughs> when we're recording, but it's just apparently a thing that's never going to go away. So no, no, Enjoy no. Our awkwardness. 
<laughs> so when I talk about self-care, I often think about an analogy and the analogy that I use is a battery. Oftentimes I think about a phone battery. <laughs> so um, when we think about our daily stressors of life, or they can be more triggering stressors or things that kind of drain us a little bit more. If we're thinking about a battery, then the stress of every day can slowly drain your battery. So getting up and getting ready in the morning might slowly drain your battery just a tiny, tiny bit. But if you're taking care of yourself, that might fill up your battery a tiny bit. If you get into um, an argument with someone, your battery might drain a little bit more. If you just happen to have a really bad day, your battery might drain a little bit more. These are stressors that have more drain on that battery of your life, we'll say. <laughs> our self-care is really, really important because that is the one thing that ultimately charges our battery. And so when we are making sure to implement those self-care strategies, when we're taking care of ourselves, we can make sure that we're kind of combating or balancing out those daily stressors or those things that are even more stressful as we are filling up our battery as it's getting drained. And it can even be evened out or overnight we're filling up our battery even more. And so making sure that we have things to refill our battery is really, really important, especially if we're considering that our battery is already getting drained. And when we think about things like trauma or just daily mental health challenges, our battery can be a little bit more drained some days more than others, or there are I think challenges that we face that can drain our battery. So it's really important to practice self-care to refill us. Another common analogy that you might hear, I just wanted to hold up an example too, because you did. Uh, you can't pour from an empty cup. This is my cup of coffee that is very literally empty, um, <laughs> which is sad, but the, the analogy is the same. Like you can't pour from an empty cup. So as counselors, if my cup is looking like this and it's totally drained, I really don't have anything to give anybody else. Uh, and that can transcend to other workplaces, other jobs, other parts of our life, like with our friends or with our family or with our partners. If my cup is empty, I really don't have anything to contribute because I have to fill it back up first. So I love Holly's battery example is much more comprehensive than my cup one, but I just wanted to participate in the like show and tell of holding something up too. <laughs> but as we talk a little bit more about self-care, I think it's really important to mention that self-care is super individualized and it looks different for everybody. So what Holly might do for self-care might look a lot different than what I do for self-care. So it's important to be very self-aware as well. Um, and just like Holly mentioned with like draining our batteries, sometimes it's good to be self-aware about what drains our batteries. So if there are certain people or situations, or like Holly mentioned, trauma even, that we're aware of, sometimes we can say like, okay, today is going to be a little bit draining because I have to be around X, Y, or Z, like the situation, family member, friend, et cetera. So afterwards, I need to make sure that I'm practicing really good self-care and I'm being very mindful about that. So some examples of self-care that are pretty generic and you might hear a lot are journaling, reading, hiking, music, art. Paul, I don't know if you want to throw some more in there too, but those are just a few. And there are so, so many, just as Chris named a very little of the, the several, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but getting support from friends, reading, um, setting boundaries, meditating, using breathing exercises, and I think what's really important as just as Chris had mentioned, self-care is super individualized. So for me, I'm someone who really likes to clean her apartment, weirdly enough. So if I spend a Sunday doing like a really good clean, that is rejuvenizing, that's charging my battery. And so for me, that might be some really good self-care. And so all these little examples are good examples, but at the end of the day, what self-care for every individual person is going to be personal to them. And just like we mentioned in one of our previous videos about not really dictating other people's healing or what that looks like, it's super important to do that with self-care too. I also like to clean my house, but I was thinking of like a bath. I am not a bath person. I don't like them. A lot of people really do. And they find that calming and relaxing to maybe light some candles or read in the bath. For me, that's not self-care and that's okay. It might look super different. For self-care, I love to go hiking. I love to go for a walk with my dog. I love to just be with my dog. And I think that that's important too. When we talk about exercise, exercise doesn't necessarily mean going to the gym and working out for 30 minutes and like doing some cardio. <laughs> exercise constitutes a lot of different things. Like taking my dog for a walk, even if it's just 15 minutes around the block, that's still exercise. So 
I think that's super important to recognize as well. And like Holly mentioned, with all of these things being so different, and I just keep referring back to you because um, I feel like you covered so much, <laughs> but these things look so different. If you're struggling with something, if there's one that you want to try out, but you're not really sure how to get started with, for instance, journaling or writing, saying like, hey, you know what, like, or even art, I think this might be a really useful self-care for me, but I'm not really sure how to get started. Talk with someone you know who's into it or talk with a counselor or a therapist and say, hey, like, I'd really love to start journaling. What are some suggestions you have for how to do that and what that looks like? Or even Google, there's obviously a lot of things on the internet as well. Um, look some of those up. There's some great tips online for journaling. There might be some great suggestions people have for books if you wanna read. Um, and just kind of checking those things out a little bit further to find what self-care works for you is super important. So hopefully these are some helpful tips and tricks to get you started on self-care and just to emphasize the importance of it and how it connects so much to our mental health and how much it supports our mental health. So thank you all for tuning in today. I know this one's a little more brief than we typically are, but hopefully it had some helpful information. Definitely. And hopefully everyone is thinking about Mental Health Awareness Month and the ways that they can uh, provide awareness or spread awareness and maybe provide support to those around them. And yeah, thank you as always for watching. See you next week.